Today I have a 97 Jeep Wrangler here. Uh, that is not necessarily important because this applies to most any four-wheel drive truck style suspension. We're going to be doing a drive shaft, a front drive shaft on this vehicle. Now there's a couple little quirks specific to Jeep and Dodge kind of things. Uh, specifically why the drive shaft needs to be replaced in this particular vehicle and it has to do with a coupler design that Chrysler used. Alright, so the particular drive shaft that we are replacing on uh, Craze Performance Repair today is called a double cardone joint, I believe is the correct term. Uh, now, it's got a really unique joint to it. So, here's the entire drive shaft, and you can see it's like a normal U joint on this end, and then on this end, you got this goofy freaking thing. And these things are actually very prone to failing, it'll create a weird shimmy or shake to the vehicle. And where it fails, see if I can get a good view of it. Well, here. Check this out. So, see how when I move this block, this joint will actually move with it? So what we have is there's a little ball socket inside of here. So you can see that little joint inside of there where there's a little bit of grease sticking out. If we look on this side here, you can see some of the grease oozing out of the side of it. And that little ball socket inside of here is the part that's prone to failing. And so we're going to go ahead and pull the old one out and show you uh, what we're up against when it comes to what goes wrong with these things. This particular vehicle has a very small lift kit. It's probably two and a half inches or so. And lift kits on vehicles with that style of suspension, especially the really short wheel base like this Jeep Wrangler here, it will actually make those joints fail more frequently. And the reason being is because they're flexing more. So U-joints, uh, I forget the number, it's 13 or 7 or I don't remember, but they only have a very short degree of capability of flexing or, or working properly before they start to bind a little bit. Now it's normal for them to bind and they're designed to take the load of a little bit of bind, but the more bind you give them, the shorter their lifespan is. And that's why they usually fail is situations where they have lift kits like this but without changing the suspension geometry. Now you can see we're at the front axle right now. Here's the tie rod in. This is a U-joint as well. Now this U-joint right here is extremely high failure rate and the reason being is again because of the angle at which things turn. So every time you turn the wheel say in a parking lot or or anywhere where you're turning a little bit tighter radius when you turn this thing, you know, it changes the angle at which that joint is sitting. And as this is rotating, going around the parking lot, this thing will bind, which again is normal to a certain extent, but the more aggressive it is, the faster it'll wear out. And that's why these things have such a high failure rate and why new, newer cars, newer trucks, things like that, they use what's called a CV joint, which has several different balls and sockets that all slide and move within each other and it has a lot, lot more degree of range before any kind of binding happens. And they work a hell of a lot better. So this U-joint design is great for minimal angle movements because it's very strong, but it's pretty poor for something like a steering area where you have a lot of degree of movement. Now, you can see where the joints are located for the ball joint and that's the part that swivels. And it's very important where they locate that on the vehicle because they can actually get just a little bit more degree of turn before bind on these joints because of the way that it's all lined up. All right, so we're underneath the vehicle now, obviously, and you can see here is the drive shaft that we're going to be replacing. This is the front drive shaft. Now, Jeep was pretty creative in the respect of how they laid things out. They tried to get a little more length out of the front drive shaft on these, so the rear is pretty heavy to bind uh, but that double joint is supposed to allow more flexibility and that's why they put it there I don't know I sometimes I want to think that it doesn't allow more flexibility because that's the one that always fails always fails I'm not sure why that is exactly 
as far as why that one fails so much more often when it's supposed to be designed for a higher angle, at least I believe so. If you know anything different, please comment below. I would like to know if anybody knows a little more than I do about them. So you can see here a rock guard, belly pan, whatever you want to call it. It basically, it protects the drive line from rocks and stuff if this thing were to get in some really rough terrain and a rock were to hit it. So the whole thing with this is it is big time in the way. I have to remove this in order to do the shaft with fair ease. Uh, it's a lot easier to remove this. I think you can do it without it, but you guys want to see what's going on anyway, so I'm going to get it out of our way. Now, the first thing I have to take off are these bolts after I take this guy off here. So I'm going to take these little bolts over here off, this guy, and there's some bolts inside there. And I believe, if I remember correctly, they come through the back of the yoke on the transfer case. So let's go ahead, pull this off, and get rolling here. Okay, so this plate here, it also supports the transfer case transmission area. There's uh, some bolts underneath or above these holes that I have to remove, but I can't remove just this plate because everything will drop down, it won't be good. Uh, I wanted to also note this here. You can see the angle that this is at. That is quite the aggressive angle. Now the suspension is fully re relieved right now, and that is why, but a lot of times with vehicles that have lift kits, it's good to tip the pinion a little bit to make up for that so you don't have quite as much of an angle. Also, this thing a lot of times gets dropped down by gapping the bolts that hold this whole unit up. They bring it down a little bit by putting washers in there or some kind of spacer and that helps the lift kit be able to not bind so badly. So what I need to do now is get this thing supported. So since I'm doing the front drive shaft, I'm going to go to this rear yoke here. Alright, so you can see I have both of the shafts here. And the reason I lay them side by side is not just for you guys, but I do it for myself so that I can compare the length of it. I want to make sure that it looks like it's correct. Now, this one is shorter collapsed than this one is, which makes me wonder a little bit. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of disturbing to see that. I guess what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and throw these up here. Now, there's a few differences here. Okay, so you can see the length here is a little bit different so this one is definitely a little longer so I'm gonna have to look at that when I get it in there make sure that it's not too long uh, that's a little concerning because if you get one that's too long what will happen as soon as the suspension goes up it'll bind really badly and it'll push the differential assembly forward stress the bushings it'll just destroy everything so you definitely do not want that now I showed you this joint earlier on the new one here is the one on this one here and this guy had very little shaking, uh, barely noticeable, but he did have a squeak that was happening. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Hear a little chirping? So as this thing was turning, it's doing this, and it was chirping. Now this one, let's see if I can find it here. We're seeing a crack in it. Okay, so the crack is only in the rubber part of the joint so there's a rubber bellows on here and I won't be able to show you it's too tough too tough to see but there's a little rubber bellows in here and it's cracked so what's happened is there's just a pile of dirt inside this thing and it's and it's worn out now if you look at this see sometimes it holds other times it's floppy so it depends on where it's at there it's holding there it's floppy so this thing is just worn out from getting sanded down with gravel and dirt and debris. Uh, and furthermore, having the, the uneven way of it binding is what causes it to unevenly wear out. So what happens is it's a little bit loose in its normal resting state. I mean, it's got some pressure, of course. But when you bend this thing and then you try turning it bent, it'll 
push more pressure, pressure on that ball. So a little grain of sand will work its way into the loose section and then as soon as it goes to, to twist and starts to bind in the certain position that it binds, it'll take that grain of sand and just grind it into a powder right there. It'll beat up the metal, grind the sand down into a powder, and then slowly deteriorate and ruin this joint. Do notice one more thing. See the size of this? This is a lot smaller than this one, which is also an interesting thing to notice. So this uh, drive shaft here, it's not too short or too long. Uh, I was thinking totally backwards here. So these control arms, you can see they're at an angle like that. That's going to pull the axle backwards and in fact it's going to make it look too short. Uh, now if it were to be lifted anymore without adjusting the way everything lines up, then it would be too short. In fact, even if you drop this down. That would probably make it even worse because it would bring everything closer together. So this guy is pretty much stuck at the lift that he has unless he does some weird custom something or other. Uh, I'm not sure how that would have to work. But regardless, the suspension, as soon as this goes up, the arm here is going to push the differential and axle assembly all forward. So it's going to stretch this outward. And in fact, when it goes up and beyond collapse, even though the control arm is going up and it's going to be pulling the axle or the, the assembly back, at that point, this shaft is going to be straight with the way the transfer case is going. So it's still going to have more than enough room to collapse the suspension. So you've seen me just quick clean this off. I mean, you guys probably it was 10 seconds or whatever, who knows. But uh, for me, it took a little bit. Now, I just used a piece of wood here to scrape it so I didn't scratch the paint too bad. I started with this and then I realized that's gonna take forever because I was trying to be gentle when I was doing it. So I didn't scratch it and then I saw this, I'm like, you know what, piece of wood. So if you have a Jeep or any vehicle really that has a belly pan, that can collect stuff like this one does uh, definitely you want to clean that out and the reason I say that is, is look at here you see a little bit of red kind of I don't know how well you guys can see that but like here there's a lot of red this is where it goes against the frame and anything like that is because this stuff holds moisture and when it's holding moisture obviously things are gonna rust so I went ahead and cleaned it off pretty decent I'm gonna take and clean this surface here off a little bit better and then I'm going to spray that with some anti-seize to keep it from having a problem again. Now, here's the actual dirt that came out of there. You can see it's, it's, it's a lot. I mean, holy cow, I'm going to compress it here just so I can try and fit it all in the pan and see how much it feels like it weighs. All right. Wow. That is almost, probably almost 10 pounds, maybe 7 or 8 pounds worth of dirt. Uh, so this thing definitely went on a little weight weight loss program. So that is a lot of dirt in there. I'm going to clean this up a little bit further and then we are going to finish putting this thing together. So do yourself a favor, clean this, clean this sucker off when you have it off of there. Uh, you might get a little dirty in the process, but yeah, minor detail. If you happen to be into these repair videos like this where they're nice simple fixes, now uh, there's a guy I'd like you to check out. His YouTube channel is called Easy Fix. Now I'll throw a link above and this guy basically does the same kind of things I do but he usually does the smaller items. Uh, flushing heater cores or just a little bit of a simpler fix like his name Easy Fix. So he does a lot of the simpler stuff and he's trying to promote his channel. He's new. He's trying to push it and get it moving. So check his channel out and be sure to uh, let him know I sent you.
that brings us to the end of this video. If you liked what you've seen, be sure to hit the like button. Uh, check out my channel, see if you want to subscribe. There's plenty of this content on there. Uh, there's also some interesting content related to performance vehicles that's kind of fun to watch. So check it out. Uh, I will throw another link, either one of these corners here, on this vehicle again as soon as the video is up. There is going to be an exhaust manifold replacement on this Jeep because it is leaky. So, like, share, subscribe, and I hope to see you on another video. Thanks for watching.